This is the Kalatz conjecture. The rules of this game are simple. Pick any integer like 3, and then if it's odd, multiply by 3 and add 1, bringing you to 10. And then if it's even, like 10 is, then divide by 2, bringing you to 5. What you're watching now is a visualization of the path each integer takes as you repeat this process over and over. We are incrementally adding higher and higher numbers to this graph, and what you might notice is that every number so far falls into the 421, 421 orbit. Now, a conjecture is just an unproven educated guess, and the guess that Kalatz made states that no matter what integer you pick at the beginning, you could pick 5 or you could pick 2 billion, will eventually fall towards the 421 orbit. It might take hundreds of steps, but it's bound to happen at some point. To describe how hard this conjecture is to prove, Paul Erdos famously said, mathematics may not be ready for such problems. But computers have tested every number up to 2 sextillion, that's 10 to the 21st power, and all of them have eventually fallen back to 421 421. The difficulty is how unpredictable the patterns are. Notice how 24 took just 8 steps to reach the 4 to 1 loop, and its neighbor 25 takes a bit longer at 21 steps, with its path reaching a peak of 88 before passing through its own neighbor of 26. But how will the next number, 27, fare? Shockingly, it takes 109 steps to descend to 421, passing through a high point of 9,232, about three quarters of the way through its journey. If you were calculating 27's path by hand, and you had gotten to that stage and no further, you might conclude that 27 explodes to infinity. But sure enough, it passes through a good amount of even numbers which have its value enough to bring it down to 1. So there's really no rhyme or reason for which numbers quickly reach 1, and which ones take an agonizingly long time to reach 1. But here's the thing. You've probably already seen this. The Kalatz conjecture is one of the most famous unsolved problems in math. So let me show you something you might not yet have seen. Here's the rules. Divide by 2, multiply by 3, and add 1. These numbers are arbitrary, and we could change them to whatever we want, right? Maybe we could. Welcome to the Kalatz conjecture multiverse. So what's going on here? Well, each universe is following a different set of rules. Okay, so say we find ourselves in this universe. What happens when we reach an odd number, like 3? We multiply it by the label on the y-axis, times 3, and then add it by the label on the x-axis, plus 5, giving us 14, and that's indeed what we see. And for even numbers, we'll still divide by 2 in all universes, just to keep it simple which means that Kalatz's trusty 3x plus 1 universe that we're all familiar with is right here. You might look at this chaotic expanse in front of you and wonder to yourself, why do some universes get absolutely jam-packed with numbers, while others are relatively empty? And why do a third of them say integer overflow? Let's take a tour of the multiverse to learn the answers to those questions. First stop, the realm of the hub and spoke universes, which dominate the lower regions. Let's look at one of their constituents, the lower left universe. This rule set sends all odd numbers to 0x plus 0. They all go to 0, which is actually the only time 0 appears in this entire multiverse. That creates the hub and spoke formation, with 0 as our hub. It's like the saying that all roads lead to Rome. But here, it's a bit more complicated because even numbers don't fall directly to zero. Instead, they divide by 2 over and over until all their powers of 2 have been removed, like 12, 6, 3, and then they fall to zero. If you're curious where zero itself goes to, well, zero divided by 2 is still zero, so it has an arrow looping back to itself. The 0x plus 1 universe behaves the same way, but all numbers point to 1 instead of 0, and 1 is odd so it points back to 1, and in fact that's how all universes on the bottom row operate, which is why they're part of the same family. But notice a key difference. 
Because 2 and 4 are even numbers, they themselves will be sent to their halves, 1 and 2. That means the 0x plus 2 universe centers around a cycle from 1 to 2 to 1 to 2, a biangle, and the 0x plus 4 universe centers around a cycle from 4 to 2 to 1 to 4 to 2 to 1, a triangle. That makes these universes less like Rome and more like the twin cities of St. Paul and Minneapolis, or the research triangle of Raleigh, Durham, and Cary. That name sounds familiar. The last interesting trait of the hub and spoke universes is the lengths of their spokes, which has a connection to the abacaba pattern. It has to do with how many powers of two you can multiply before it goes over the limit. Do you see the relationship? This phenomenon is known as period doubling, and it's similar to what you see in Mandelbrot set zoom videos. Alright, let's zoom out again. Dominating the left region is the shape universe family. Triangles, biangles, and uni-angles, we've got them all. In the 1x plus 0 universe, since y equals 1x is just the identity, odd numbers are sent to themselves. That results in these islands of population 1, but low enough odd numbers get to have a trail because their power of 2 multiples descend into them. Let's head over to the 2x plus 0 universe and look at an example. So 11 will go to 22, which just goes back to 11. As you can see, odd numbers will point to their doubles, which are even, so they'll be halved right back to the original number. That gives rise to this universe's iconic biangle formations. Again, low enough odd numbers feature the power of two trails. And finally, let's look at the 4x plus 0 universe. 7 will go up to its quadruple 28, which descends to 14 and then back to 7. Odd numbers now point to their quadruple, which now has to be halved twice before returning to the original, creating this universe's iconic triangle formation. Power of 2 trails still exist, like 16, 8, 4, but we have to count much higher to find them, because every triangle itself already features a multiple of 4, so the starting point of each trail is much higher. So now we've seen the shapes of the 1x, 2x, and 4x universes. But then what about the 3x universe? Why is 3x the odd one out? Well, when an odd number, like 1, is tripled, it actually lands on another odd number, 3. So it never gets the chance to land on an even number and descend, and will keep tripling up to infinity. 1, 3, 9, 27, 81, 243, 729, and so on. In this video, if the next bubble created ever goes above 2 to the 31st, the integer overflow limit, I pause that universe's simulation and consider it a lost cause. And that's what happens here once we reach 3 to the 20th. If you're curious about the higher universes of the left column, all powers of 2 create clean-cut shapes, with log base 2 of n plus 1 sides. All odd numbers trivially explode to infinity, and all even numbers that aren't powers of 2... hmm... Well, these numbers must have a prime factor that is larger than 2 somewhere in them, so the 2s will be whittled away, reducing them to the same runaway as their largest odd factor. Like 6x going 1, 6, 3, 18, 9, 54, 27, 162, 81, and so on. The more powers of 2, the larger the reduction. So the shape multiverse is almost entirely composed of runaways. But that brings me to the next stop on our Kalatz tour, the universes that quickly run away to infinity. When we watch everything play out, why does it seem like the runaways form a checkerboard pattern? Well, in every universe, even numbers always decrease to their half, and odd numbers always increase to ax plus b, where a is the number on the y-axis and b is the number on the x-axis. But hold on, to even get to this case, x must be odd. So if a is odd and b is even, like in these universes, the final sum is guaranteed to be odd, like how 3 times 5 plus 0 is 15. And if a is even and b is odd, like in these universes, the final sum is also guaranteed to be odd, like how 4 times 5 plus 1 equals 21. So when you're in these universes and you stumble upon an odd number, you will only ever reach larger and larger odd numbers, and you'll never reach an even number that could bring you back down. To make this educational, we could describe this phenomenon using a concept in theoretical computer science called a finite state machine. Look at it and learn. You might say, duh, why would anyone construct a rule set where half the rules never even happen? Are they a dumbass? That's why colloquially, these are sometimes called dumbass universes. But to keep things kid-friendly, we can just call them runaway universes. There's actually four subcategories, linear dumbass, exponential dumbass, pseudo-linear dumbass, and pseudo-exponential dumbass. 
If the scaling factor a is 1, then we have something like y equals x plus 2, where odd numbers just point to the next odd number two units up. 1, 3, 5, 7, you get the point. Growth is linear, so it takes on the order of o of n, millions of iterations, to reach the integer overflow limit. That's why linear dumbass universes fill to the brim with nodes, but will take days of runtime to actually reach its first error. In this simulation, after each new node is added, it takes about one second for the next Next node in the path to be added. However, I didn't want to bore viewers when the path created was really long, like the 109 node path for 27. So the speed of each new node being added gets faster and faster following the inverse square root, meaning the fourth node in the chain takes about half the time as the first, the 100th node takes one tenth, and so on. That's great if the path at some point ends, giving us a satisfying release, but here it's just never gonna end. And now it's in the thousands. If the scaling factor a is 2 or greater, then we have something like y equals 2x plus 1, where each odd number points to another odd number multiplicatively larger, like 1, 3, 7, 15, 31. As you can see, this 2x plus 1 universe in particular produces the Mersenne primes. Growth here is exponential, so it only takes on the order of log of n a couple dozen iterations to get to the integer overflow limit. That's why exponential dumbass universes reach an integer overflow error with relatively empty arenas. Okay, that covers these 14 runaways, but wait, there's more? Like this one. Why did the 4x plus 2 universe overflow relatively quickly, despite not falling on the runaway checkerboard? And why did the 2x plus 4 universe fill to the brim with nodes, despite also not falling on the runaway checkerboard? But to answer that, we need to talk about parallel universes. Let's zoom into the 4x plus 2 universe. If we follow that rule set of y equals 4x plus 2, what happens? 1 goes to 4 plus 2 equals 6, which then falls back to 3. Notice that this expression will always return an even number. So then 3 goes up to 14, which reduces down to 7. And then 7 goes up to 30, which reduces down to 15. Hold on a second, this is just the Mersenne prime universe again, 2x plus 1, but with more steps. Another way to think of it is that we can factor the 2 out of 4x plus 2 to reveal who we're really working with. In fact, all universes that fall on the purely even lattice immediately reduce to their divided by two counterparts. Here's an example to show what I mean. Notice that in the 1x plus 1 universe, 19 follows the path 20, 10, 5, 6, 3, 4, 2, 1. And in the 2x plus 2 universe, the double of before, 19 now follows the path ignore 40, 20, 10, 5, ignore 12, 6, 3, ignore 8, 4, 2, 1. And in the 4x plus 4 universe, the quadruple of before, 19 now follows the path ignore 80, ignore 40, 20, 10, 5, ignore 24, ignore 12, 6, 3, ignore 16, ignore 8, 4, 2, 1. It's all the same path, just less efficient. So that's why I call these parallel universes. This also explains why the 2x plus 4 universe behaves just like the 1x plus 2 universe, giving us linear dumbassery and pseudo-linear dumbassery. And why the 4x plus 2 universe behaves just like the 2x plus 1 universe, giving us exponential dumbassery and pseudo-exponential dumbassery. So, when all is said and done, just 9 of our original 36 universes don't fit into the categories of hub and spoke, shapes, dumbass, or parallel. And that's pretty much it for our tour of the Collapse Conjecture multiverse. If you want to hear more about my thoughts on those nine unique universes, check out my hour-long ramble that I uploaded to my second channel, LazyKH. And as a return to the basics, here's what the standard 3x plus 1 universe looks like when we let it run for a bit longer. Nodes are colored more red the higher they are on a logarithmic scale. So the fact that we're up to the 120s now, and 27's path going through 9232 is the only place reds and oranges even appear, really does demonstrate how unexpectedly long its journey was at such an early point. Let's jump forward through time. If it irritates you that we got so close to breaking the 5 digit barrier but just didn't, don't worry, 255 has the decency to fix that issue. Anyway, thank you for watching this video, and goodbye.